So last time we talked, Autumn Volkov, the heir of my legacy challenge, made a new friend, Caleb Vitor, and introduced him to her sister, Nicole Volkov, who developed a tiny crush on him after he defended her from Greg the werewolf outside her home. The older she gets, the grumpier Alexis gets. I wonder if she'll stay like this for the rest of her life. Oh great, Ezra and Chris are rampaging. That's cool Ezra, just break your bed. Not like anyone else is breaking it anyways. Not Chris intimidating Autumn, she's just minding her business. But girl, you should really be over this by now. You live with werewolves, accept it. Christopher gained an atrocious reputation after fighting Greg for defending his family. Seriously, that's fine. We'll just sue for slander and we'll win. Rachel Berry came back from her checkup. Everything looking great. Then Clint and Alexis, who pissed on the grass right in front of Clint, followed by an evil laugh. It's okay Clint, I'm sick of their shit too. Autumn vacuumed the house and Clint took a picture of a venue for his work task while Remembrance released some tension. Today is her first day of high school and she'd be lying if she said she wasn't a bit nervous. Who the hell is crying in Autumn's bed? Clint, what the hell man, even though Radio Isotope was nervous for her first day of high school, she was happy that Edward would be there to support her. She headed to the cafeteria before class to buy some breakfast, Edward joining her soon after. As they began to talk, they gained a new family dynamic, close, the two mistakes being the closest, how cute, Edward gave Rogamuffin the rundown, the nicest teachers, the best lockers, where to eat lunch, she felt a little more comfortable after talking to Edward, and while racially motivated, and Edward continued talking, Autumn received a call, Bob Pancakes, her former pharmacist, had died, um, okay, and we care because, oh my god, he died right now on campus, I just pissed my pants from how hard I just laughed, it was finally time for first period, and luckily, Rice Paper shared this class with Edward, but, considering their teacher literally just died, there was nothing to do, um, who is this girl, and why does she look like, she could be a long lost Volkov member, if Chris cheated, I swear, thank goodness, she's not a Volkov, but that green lace front is a sleigh, Edward, can you not figure out anything for yourself? To kill the time, Edward called his girlfriend Hilary Tanaka and ramification. Well, found herself a bit distracted by the boy sitting in front of her. She found the back of his head very attractive, boldly deciding to say hi to him. And that's when she felt it. It was love at first sight. And he felt it too. Did Reptilian just fall in love? Reformation and her new love interest, whose name she learned is Zayden, immediately followed each other outside on their lunch break to talk to each other. So insanely mesmerized by one another, everything about Zayden was perfect to her, his hair, his nose, his voice, and he has red eyes just like her. If that's not fate, what else could it be? He was made for her, and she was made for him. They decided to go to the football field for some more privacy. They got to know each other, having deep conversations and discussing interests, but the both of them felt like they had known each other their entire lives. She didn't mind at all when Zayden put his arm around her. Despite the meeting to Sims hours before, she didn't mind his body being so close to hers. She didn't mind staring at his beautiful red eyes and right past them into his soul. She loved how his skin felt against hers, how she could smell his cologne and hair gel. She was intoxicated by Zayden, and she found it so hard to leave him when the bell rang for second period, like she was leaving a piece of herself behind. But when she realized he was in this class with her as well, and sat right beside her, she felt much better. Thank goodness, the teacher had died. It gave her the opportunity to spend the entirety of class daydreaming about Zayden, imagining what their wedding will be like and what their kids will look like. This bitch really crying in her locker, accurate video of me in high school. And you best believe that RMS Titanic and Zayden hung out alone after school. He told her he knew a spot near the Copperdale fairgrounds, a lonesome couch next to some graffiti and a stream. Ratatouille loved this, it was quite
quiet, peaceful, and private. She didn't care about sitting on the stains on the couch from Sims who had previously gotten wicked on it. And she didn't care about the fact that she was freezing cold. She just loved being alone and secluded with the love of her life Zayden. They talked about everything under the sun and made lots of jokes. This went on for hours, until Zayden took a leap of faith and tried something else. Roblox couldn't believe it. In one day, she had started high school, fallen in love, and had her first kiss. Today was amazing, and she'll never forget her time with Zayden. Wait. What? I'm sorry. What? Literally what the fuck just happened? Did Zayden just try to rob her? And he lost LMAO. Ronald McDonald found herself so confused. Especially when Zayden tried robbing her again. Was this his plan all along? Had everything he said been a lie? Did the kiss they shared mean nothing? Rapscallion couldn't believe it. Zayden didn't actually mean anything he said. And along with breaking her heart, this infuriated her, making her instantly rampage. Rack of ribs threatened Zayden, letting him know to never f*** with her again, that she was not the one, and that she didn't mean anything she said about him before running away. Completely embarrassed about both Zayden being a complete scumbag, and the fact that she was still in love with him, 